You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Got an interesting one for you today. Usually, I come on here and we talk about some nutter butters doing some nutter buttery, of course. And today is no exception. Let me introduce you to Andrew Womack and his friend uh, George Pearsons. Now, George Pearsons, if you don't know him, is uh, Kenneth Copeland's son-in-law. And he prophesied, quote-unquote, all the same stupid garbage that Kenneth Copeland, quote-unquote, prophesied all the way back in 2020 or whatever. Um you know, after Trump had unequivocally and beyond a shadow of a doubt lost the election. You remember that? (laughs) George Pearson comes in to save the day and tell us that God's going to fix it. This one is from um, early November 2020. So the vote had just finished and it was obvious at this point within just a couple of days of the of it being obvious Trump lost. So this is a word from the Lord, and he's not happy with what's going on. He Ooh boy. He's not happy with some of these things that have been decided, and he's not happy with the, the opposite direction that he wants to go. Uh-oh, well, okay, then God can just fix it then, right? He's just going to come in and rearrange the situation until it is the way he wants it to be? Where abortion is concerned where the Supreme Court is concerned, where religious liberty is concerned, where Israel is concerned. And he's saying, watch me work. Yes, amen. Lord, we're going to see you work in this. We're going to see you work in the midst of this. So the claim was that Trump was going to come back in because he didn't complete his work. He believed that Trump was going to receive two terms because an old prophet named Kim Clement prophesied that Trump is going to get two terms. I think all the way back in 2014 or 2016, I don't remember. And these guys are trying to grapple with the fact that they were wrong any way they possibly can. And we invoke the name of Jesus and take authority over the powers and the principalities and the spirit of communism that is trying to infiltrate, overtake, and attack this nation right now. You bow your knee. Communism trying to overtake. Okay, if this is your first time here, uh, let me just lay this out for you. Communism doesn't exist in America to basically any degree. No public officials are communist. No public officials, not only do they not claim to be communist, but they aren't communist, even crypto communists. There just aren't communists in the U.S., okay? A few people on Twitter might be communists, but this guy seems to think that like they're around every corner this nation right now you bow your knee ordering satan to bow his knee to god to the name of the lord jesus you hear the voice of the lord through this man of god you have no authority in this watch me work so did trump ever get reinstated of course he didn't this guy's just flat out lying the reason i'm talking about george pearson's right now because there's this TV show called Flashpoint and George Pearson's Kenneth Copeland's son-in-law did an appearance on Flashpoint. Now Flashpoint is on Kenneth Copeland's TV network, the Victory Network. I don't even know what channel it is now, but it's like Oxygen or E or Cartoon Network. The same thing, basically. Anyway, I wanted to listen to what George Pearson's said on Flashpoint. But before listening, I want to show you one other guest they have. They had George Pearsons and they had, hang on, and they had uh, Hank Kuneman, talked about him recently, and they had Gene Bailey, right? Gene Bailey's the host. And aside from all those guys, they have none other than Andrew Womack. If you don't know Andrew Womack, let me introduce you. This is probably my favorite clip from Andrew Womack. 
This one is from um, er, mid January 2022. I tell you, partnership in the gospel is the greatest thing you can do. Partnership meaning giving me money. When we get to heaven, I can guarantee you there's not a single one of you that's going to be saying, I wish you hadn't have encouraged me to give so much and that I'd have got my fifth flat screen TV <laughs> and that I would have had more jewels and fancier clothes and a nicer car. All that stuff will be gone. It's okay, no one is, uh, by and large, trying to get a fifth flat screen TV or nicer cars or whatever. Most people just trying to survive, bro. It's not about living in... I don't know, it's big, beautiful mansions or whatever, the way that this guy seems to think it is. People are out there destitute, not a penny to their name. And what's he saying about them? And fancier clothes and a nicer car. All that stuff will be gone. It's only what you invest in the kingdom that is going to benefit you for eternity. You're going to come up to me and hug my neck and kiss me and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for getting that money out of my pocket. These people are shameless, man. Absolutely shameless. And I am here for every second of it. It is one of the most entertaining things that I think I've ever seen in my life. So anyway, I want these two guys made an appearance on Flashpoint. I want to talk about this Flashpoint episode. See what's going on with these guys. Um, Hank Kuhneman is his own can of worms. You know what? Since I'm talking about him, let's talk about Hank Kuhneman, too. I talked about him very recently on my... Uh, oh, an unfiltered YouTube channel. I This is what I do. I sit here 10, 10.30 a.m. Eastern to 2.30 p.m. Eastern. We just hang out and we chat and we watch things like this all day and uh, for, you know, twice a week. And it's a lot of fun. So come over there if you if you want to, like, do more hanging out. Additionally, if you miss it, if you're watching this, like, outside of those times... I upload the videos cleaned up and edited and colorized and audio modified and everything so you can check it out. But let me just show you Kuhneman. God, let me find a really good one of Kuhneman. I'm just looking through here. Let's see. I mean, this is probably the most famous video of Kuhneman to have come out recently. Should give you an idea. He believes himself to be a prophet of God. He thinks that Jesus is, I'm sorry, he thinks that Trump is going to fulfill Jesus' role on earth as son of man, as far as I can tell. And he thinks that he sees Jesus face to face every day. You know, Jesus wasn't this nice little limp-wristed, weak-kneed little, you know, guy that walked around. I've seen Jesus. He's a man's man. So I told, you know, I, I want to tell it to him next time I see him. I'm going to tell him, Jesus, you're a man's man, man. You know, but anyway. So look at what David prays, and you have to understand this, over 200 times. Anyway, the point is that he <laughs> he thinks he sees Jesus, and he thinks that Jesus is super manly, and apparently that's his defining quality. Personally, I thought Jesus' defining quality was his love for the poor, but I guess I'm wrong because Hank Kuhneman sees Jesus in the flesh regularly or something, and he says Jesus is a big, burly guy, who, I get what, does he not like the poor? Does he hate the poor? Can't stand them? I don't know. Anyway, let's listen to this Flashpoint episode, see what these people have to say for themselves. And while we watch this, we're going to play some Mega Man Legends. Should just be in the background, won't bother you too much if you've never seen it before. Um, it's just a fun little game for the original PlayStation 1. So, yeah. Um, I have some Super Chats to hit. And I also want to change my screen cropping so that you guys can see it a little bit better because it is miscropped. One second here. Screen capture raw. Um, screen capture. Sorry, I just want to make it so that, like, Gene Bailey's head is not cut off, like, the top of his head, you know. Um, just make it evened out here. Where the holy heck is my, here it is, screen share cropped, good. Okay, I think that, oh, one more. Screen share cropped, or, okay, that's good. Perfect, all right. Now let's talk about these guys while we start a brand new game of Mega Man Legends. This is a new controller too, somebody gave me this and I haven't tried it out, so hopefully it works well. 
Angel or and more. Thank you for being a member for six months. That's fantastic. I know it's not related, but my Etsy shop, Angel or Crafts, had its first sale last month. No way. That's great. I want to share this accomplishment with everyone here. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Congratulations. Gave me an opportunity to share my own interesting little news about Etsy. I have an Etsy shop, as you know, I have for years. I've sold thousands of things. I think 5,000, 6,000 things, completely unconnected from YouTube. It was just like I had 3D printers, a 3D printing army, and I 3D printed stands for retro game stuff, like Super Nintendo stands where you could put the games in. Because if you stack Super Nintendo games side by side, I have some right here. I was thinking about showing you here. This isn't an advertisement because I don't sell this anymore. But here, this is the kind of thing that I... There we are. This is the kind of thing that I used to 3D print right here, you know. And it's just like, you got the back and it takes advantage of like the um, the vertical space because when you stack them side by side, you're you're missing out on a lot of that vertical space. So anyway, that's what my Etsy shop used to do. And I became like a five star seller and everything for a while. I put my my shop on vacation mode, haven't done anything with it since until now. I have been trying to figure out a way to like do a pre-order system for my books so that I know how many books I need to have printed on the first run because if I have like 500 books printed and I only get like 100 sales or something, you know, where the hell am I going to put 400 books in my house? It's just not going to fit. So the pre-order system will help me determine how many I should print. Um, <clears throat> if you guys want to check out my uh, pre-order system on Etsy, you can do it by going to owenmorgan.com slash book. It's in the link or it's in the it's in a link in the description. Owenmorgan.com slash book. Check that out if you're interested. Um, I have a longer book. It's going to be about this size roughly my final book this book is called what einstein told his cook i have no idea what it's about my wife reads a lot but yeah this will be the full book and then this is going to be the size of the second book roughly it's about uh, 60 70 pages long somewhere in there and um this one i hope that you, you guys will be able to give this to like family members and stuff who might be inside the religion still. The, the book that's this size is going to be about basically questions that questions for Jehovah's Witnesses. A hundred questions for Jehovah's Witnesses is the title. And it just kind of pokes holes in, you know, the religion. This book, on the other hand, when I release it, not this actual one, but you know, the bigger one is going to be my story of exiting and the doctrine in more detail um, and their history and some of the more depraved things that the organization has done. So anyway, um, if you guys want to pre-order, I would greatly appreciate it so that I know what, like how many to print, basically. OwenMorgan.com slash book. It's officially open. Um, I still have to work out the bank account situation. I set up a bank account, but I I need to change the bank account that's connected to the Etsy shop. I don't know. Anyway, I'll figure it out, but pre-orders are open. Because the book is done. It's completely done now. I just need to send it off for line editing. takes about 10 days, and then send it off for printing. And that'll take another 10 or so evangelicals never lie thank you so much for the super chat i re, uh, super chat i really appreciate that always appreciate your work exposing magical thinking rank hypocrisy grift and corruption is more important than ever absolutely glad you're here and um again i appreciate that super chat so much we're gonna get to this in just a second i swear <laughs> i just wanted to mention all of that you know um the books both of them the hundred questions and uh, what I'm calling Understanding Jehovah's Witnesses. It's a working title, maybe not final. 
Okay, I, I'm trying to remember how to do the, okay, yeah, okay. I think I can work with this. The working title, Understanding Jehovah's Witnesses, they can both be read as a non-Jehovah's Witness or as somebody who's never, ever been affiliated with the religion to any degree, ever. It can also, like, the hundred questions can also be read by people who've never been affiliated. Um, but I did include some pretty intensive doctrinal stuff in the hundred questions. Like, I, I, I really dug into it about the statue of Daniel, you know, the book of Daniel and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you guys like it, like both of them. And uh, hopefully I get a lot of pre-orders. I would really appreciate that very much. It would help me a lot. And I'm excited for you guys to get to read the book. So, oh, one more thing I want to mention. Indiegogo is a uh, donation website, right? And so is GoFundMe. I could have used GoFundMe instead for the pre-order system. I don't want a donation thing. I wanted a transactional thing. Like, you guys are paying me. And I am giving you a product or service in return. You know, that's why I went with Etsy. Plus, I can sell the ebook and the MP3 audiobook down the line when it's ready on Etsy also. And I'll add it to Amazon and all of the other places, Audible and all that, of course, as time goes on. But uh, anyway, all right. I'm sure you guys are all dying to listen to these nutter butters spread their nutter buttery all over everything so have a great i guess we can get to that real pumpkin j are you still offering both books for people who pre-order the main book not at the moment i thought about it um i'll, I'll tell you what uh you know what hang on i mean uh, all right let me clarify so the hundred questions is the last chapter of the book this book is already in this book at the end. If you just get the hundred questions, then it's just a, a, like a separate piece that you can hand off to somebody or that you can like reference in the future or whatever if you want to. So if you order the full thing, you will still get a copy of this. It just won't be separate. That's all. Anyway, I did not put in that you know people who pre-order get a copy of both because um, i don't think i can make that work financially um it's just gonna be too expensive but you'll still get the information so anyway yeah thank you uh real pumpkin j for the question i appreciate that and um god i haven't used my etsy in like so long it's ridiculous I had to like figure out how to sign in, try to get my password and everything. I'm sorry guys. I know I'm supposed to be playing a game and listening to Nutter Buttery, but it was a pretty big announcement. I was excited. I spent all day doing this. Literally, I had so much work on my plate trying to get this working. I had to contact banks and, you know, give them um, EIN numbers and change information and blah, blah, blah. It was a big thing. Oh, also another th reason that I think I really prefer, uh, like Etsy to Indiegogo. This is a purchase that somebody is making and there's a third party that if you're unhappy with it, with the purchase, you can complain to them and you can return it. There's like a layer of safety for everybody, you know, like if you want a refund because the book didn't arrive or something, there is recourse for that. On Indiegogo, you're just giving me money for free and it's not connected. To any I can either give you the book or I can't. It was a donation, you know, I just wanted that extra layer of like protection and accountability for everybody. I thought that'd be better anyway okay cool let's do it time a lot of people there uh, i'm sorry colorado not california there is a difference uh pastor hank good to see you sir glad you're with us tonight 
Are you looking Good forward to, to Colorado? Yes, I am because Oh, I guess yeah, so Flashpoint isn't just a TV show. They go around and they do like whole shows. And it is Donald Trump centered. It's all about loving Trump. It's like weird and disturbing how much they love Donald Trump for real. So I guess they're going to Colorado. That's probably because Colorado um, because Trump was removed from the ballot in Colorado, I think, right? As there's nothing like going to a place that is so full of the word Amen. and decreeing the word of the Lord and watch what begins to happen in people's lives, but in this great country, the United States. Yeah, amen. So we're going to, I am excited right. about this meeting because I know God's got big plans for you, Colorado, El America. We're going to see God move in a big way. Listen, it's going to be different. If you went to other meetings, other years, look, this one's going to be different. I'm telling you, I know it down in my knower. We're going to see God. I know it in my knower. Do some things in Colorado. So join us there. It's not. You know, this could just be them trying to hype it up. Like God's going to do something in Colorado. But a, a small part of me wonders. Are they going to do something absolutely psychotic in Colorado? Like when they get there, are they going to like pull out their AR-15s and order everybody to like do something absolutely crazy. Go to all the local Walmarts and ask people if they're Democrats and if they are, then open fire or something like I don't even know. I feel like that's their equivalent. They as in Flashpoint and the, the Flashpoint audience generally. I feel like that's their equivalent of, you know, drinking the, the Kool-Aid as the Jonestown people did. Or like eating the cyanide-laced applesauce, as Heaven's Gate did. Um, it feels like this is their version, doing something psychotic to their enemies, right? Not too late. Make your plans to attend. All right, let me bring in our pet. Oh, one more thing I want to mention. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned this earlier. I will ship anywhere. I will ship anywhere. Um, I have to figure out how to do the VAT tax Um like qualification thing for Germany. Apparently there's a whole German VAT tax thing, but I already figured out like my tariff codes and everything. So I will ship to you. The answer is I will ship to you. If you wonder, the answer is yes. All right, sorry. Pastor, my boss, uh, Pastor George Pearsons, live from Eagle Mountain International Church. Good evening. My boss. I think that Pearson runs uh, victory because Kenneth Copeland is kind of losing it a little bit, you know. You mean Pastor George? Gene, it's so good to be with you. Thank you. Yeah, and so Pastor George, we started a fast, and we've been talking about it here <clears throat> right. on Fast Point. Uh <laughs> they started a fast? By the way, I'm going to be skipping the uh, video. It's a fantastic game, beautiful video and everything. But I would really rather just get to the gameplay. So go ahead and get a, uh, you know, get the game if you want to play it. It's great. Fast point. <laughs> Flash point. It's there a whole other show. <clears throat> That's another That's show. No. <laughs> fast point. That's it. That's it. You got it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Pastor George, why is fasting so important? Well, I'll tell you, Gene, when we crossed over into this new year, there was something that took place and something that happened because we've got elections that are coming up. There's so much going on in our nation right now that needs to be taken care of and straightened out. And God has given us a secret weapon. And that secret weapon is to be able to fast, to set some things aside in our what does that mean to fast? I mean, I know that it means you're supposed to like not eat for a period of time, right? Like some Muslims during Ramadan, I think, fast. They don't eat from morning to night. They only eat after dark, right? And Jews fast sometimes for this reason or that. What are they talking about when they say fast? I, I feel like they're, you know, I'm not in on whatever the hell they're talking about right now that needs to be taken care of and straightened out and God has given us a secret weapon and that secret weapon is to be able to fast to set some things aside in our lives to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit be led by the Spirit in a much more accurate way and so the Lord spoke to me right before this new year I was preparing for my son the Lord spoke to me right before this new year totally I believe him a hundred percent dude is such a joke 
you know, this seems like a little thing. It seems like nothing for him to say that the Lord spoke to me, blah, blah, blah. But people like this love to pretend that they're not um, prophets, like that they're not directly hearing the voice of God. Like Greg Locke claims he's not a prophet. But every now and then you catch him saying something that very clearly indicates that they believe it. I think this guy just outright claims to be a prophet for what it's worth. But I always listen for that. Do they think so? Sunday message of the day before New Year's and I, I had different notes that I had set out and I started praying and the Lord said, I want you to call a fast. I want you to call Kenneth Culpa Ministries, Eagle Mountain International Church, KCBC, uh, the Victory Channel, Flashpoint. Arm I guess this, these are like all of his properties that he is in control of. I think he's like a CEO or something. It's actually owned by Kenneth Copeland. Me and whoever else wants to join us, we are going to fast and we are going to pray over this year because there are so many things going on right now that need to hear. We need to hear from the Lord about what to do, what to say, and how to use our faith. Dude, this game is really hard to get used to. Like the controls. Oh my God, it's crazy. Uh, it's such a good game. But I wish the controls were a little, a little bit easier to get used to. I thought about playing. Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus for the PS2. That's actually a fun game. Third-person shooter. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll play it in a couple of minutes. We'll see. Uh, Pastor George, you, you, you referred to this in, in a lot of times uh, about this being a proclaimed fast. Yeah. Yeah. What, is, what is that? Yeah, well, what is he talking about? Proclaimed fast? What? Well, a proclaimed fast is when a group of people come before the Lord. They set their faces before God, and it's very much uh, like what we see in Second Chronicles 20, where Jehoshaphat was surrounded by the enemy, and he knew that he was in trouble. He went before the Lord, he sought the Lord, and the Lord said to declare a fast, to proclaim a fast. And it was for all the people, all the adults, all the children, <clears throat> for the whole nation, because they were about to be attacked and wiped out so they pro he proclaimed a fast before the lord and the end of that fast was they had victory over their enemies and we like why are they going to the old testament for their beliefs here i don't understand shouldn't they be going to the new testament because you know jesus completely nullified the old testament effectively and everything in it and created a brand new system like erased the entirety of the old law of the Mosaic law, you no longer have to abide by the rule of you can't eat shellfish or you can't eat pork or you have to this or that or whatever. You don't have to worry about any of that anymore because Jesus came and reversed it. Why is he talking about the Old Testament so much? I don't understand. We see Israel right now in the very same position. Uh, so true, so true. So uh, why, you said this is a 21 days. Yeah. Is, there, yeah. is there some reason specifically why 21 days? Yeah, Gene, that was based on Daniel chapter 10, the fast that Daniel had, and he fasted. He, it was a no pleasant bread fast. Now what that kind of a fast is, and we're talking about 21 days, and Gene, I'm not asking you to not eat for 21 days. Oh, good. However, there is... Yeah, people die... Uh, three, it, it's the rule of three. Three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food, which is a surprisingly long time to go without food, right? Three weeks. Oh, my God. 21 days is three weeks. So if he did ask people to do that, then they would just be dead. Aside from all that, Daniel chapter 10. I know Daniel 10. There are... Okay, the apocalyptic genre of writing, it was a genre of writing like we have today, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, romance, whatever. It was a genre of writing back then. And there are apocalyptic genre writings that aren't even in the Bible. Seriously, it was just a type of writing, a style. And the pattern goes like this, generally. The listener or i'm sorry the writer sees some absolutely wacky bizarre inexplicable thing that he 
has no clue what it means or, or anything at all. And then an angel comes in and explains it to him so he does so he can understand. And the explanation is in the form of some kind of a supposed prophecy, although it's it's never actually a prophecy. It's just like recounting what has happened in their past. And the message, the ultimately of these apocalypses, what means revealing or explanation, the result of the apocalypse is the way they end is always God's people are vindicated or they're freed or they're saved or they're whatever. You know, they win at the end of the day. That's the point of an apocalypse. Um, same with the book of Revelation. You know, um, Nero was terribly persecuting the Jews all the way back in the, when the book of Revelation was being written. And Antiochus, King Antiochus of the Seleucid Empire, was terribly persecuting the Jews in the book of Daniel. And they wrote apocalypses, apocalyptic visions, for both of those events, for the persecution at the hands of Nero and Antiochus. So anytime you hear somebody talking about Daniel... I, I don't remember how many um, apocalypses there were exactly in the book of Daniel, maybe like five, ten, something like that. But all of the apocalypses were explained in the book. They were described by an angel who came along afterward, after seeing the apocalypse and said, this is what the vision meant, blah, 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 blah. Jehovah's Witnesses, that, that they're the reason why I know all of this, <laughs> because they are obsessed with the apocalypses. Oh, my God, in Revelation and in Daniel, they, and of course, these guys, obviously, read into those apocalyptic messages stuff that's not there. They add information to it that doesn't belong there. Like... One of the apocalypses involves, you know, great beasts coming out of the sea and then a ram scaring the beasts off and then a sheep or no, a goat coming in and attacking the ram and blah, blah, blah. And the angel comes in and he describes, he explains the beasts are the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, each will fall. And then the Greek Empire will shatter into four pieces exactly what happened because it happened before Daniel was even written and they were part of the Seleucid Empire who was run by uh, he was run by Antiochus the point is that all this stuff is explained in the book there's no reason for Jehovah's Witnesses or George Pearson's or anybody else to come in and and make up some brand new explanation we got stuff that the angel explained about the, you know, the Greek empire existing, uh, Babylonian, then Persian, then Greek, and then it'll be shattered into four and you'll be under Seleucid. All of that stuff is reinterpreted by Jehovah's Witnesses to mean something completely different. They added new information on top of it. They claim that the third empire, the third beast, it wasn't, no, it went from Greece straight to Rome. They just skipped right over the Seleucid Empire, the one that Daniel was in when it was being written. And then they went from, so they went from Greece to Rome. They went from Rome to America. Like, what? Did you really just skip over the Ottoman Empire? Do you forget that that one, like, ruled Jerusalem for who knows how long? Anyway, the point is that they reinterpret information about these verses that is not there. And I think Daniel has a total of, I don't know, maybe five. Five of those apocalyptic visions. You know, the writing on the wall, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into the furnace... And they've got some about the great beasts and about a big statue of Nebuchadnezzar and some other stuff. Um, there's no deeper meaning to them than what the author of Daniel said there was. 
he was pretty clear. I mean, I'm sorry, the author of Daniel didn't even say it. What I meant to say is there's no deeper meaning than what the angel in Daniel explained. Okay, I'm not even getting this from Daniel, a prophet. I'm getting it from an angel. And these people seem to have this bizarre idea that, like, they know more about it than an angel. Okay, tell me about Daniel 10. At this point, it was talking about King Antiochus of the Seleucid Empire. Bread fast. Now, what that kind of a fast is, and we're talking about 21 days. And Gene, I'm not asking you to not eat for 21 days. Oh, good. However, there is a place where we set aside things that we enjoy, that we like, whether it be coffee, whether it's sweets, whether it's desserts. Why would you do that? Coffee is great. And we do that as a sacrifice to the Lord. And what it does is it turns down the voice of the flesh because the flesh is yelling at us. It turns down the voice of the flesh and it turns up the voice of the Holy Spirit. How does it do that? What are you even talking about? It turns up the voice of the Holy Spirit? Like what? What does that even mean? What You're telling me I can't drink coffee because I have to like love Jesus more? the hell is he going on about right now? Uh, so what are the rewards, Pastor? I know you've got like a list here. Can yeah. yeah, what are the rewards of simply denying yourself coffee every day? Like, I love drinking coffee. What's wrong with coffee? Run them down here, the rewards of doing the fast. Yeah. Well, first of all, very quickly, that idea of rewards comes from Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast, but when you fast, the Father that sees you in secret. Oh, my God, dude. You know what drives me up a wall more than just about anything? It drives me insane when televangelists or, you know what, religious people of any sort, Jehovah's Witnesses included, Mormons and everybody, it drives me nuts when they pick out a single word in the Bible or in their holy text or whatever and use that one word to base doctrine off of and build out this whole big ridiculous thing out of it. As if we even have the original language or the, the original words. As if we have any idea what tense or what past participle or whatever was being used in this case or that case. Like, these people are ridiculous. So, Jesus says, when you fast, you blah, blah, blah. And he says, that's a command. He's interpreting that as a command to fast. Jesus describing what to do if you do fast. And he's reading it as a command. Come on, man will reward you in the open. So here's what we're believing for. And this is what I want to encourage our Flashpoint Army in, to join us in this. I'm not talking about no food fast. I'm talking about setting th certain things aside. But number one, we're believing for an awakening to God in the body of Christ. In the church, we start with us. Number two, we're believing for an awakening to God in Israel. And there is an awakening going on there right now. Three, an awakening to God in America. Like, I know that awakening uh, is a pretty Christian term. It's not just, you know, QAnon, but it is very much a QAnon term. When you hear people say Great Awakening, it has a very specific connotation, especially when it's coming from the far right, like these people right here. They, I, you know, I would go as far as say, like, nearly their entire audience is probably made up of QAnoners. When they hear awakening, that's what they're thinking. And in the nations, we need to see God move in a way we've never seen before. And number four, the 2024 elections, praying over those elections, those elections that will not be corrupted. We're also praying for breakthroughs for this ministry, KCM, EMIC, KCBC, the Victory Channel, and, and your people. Boy, how many like acronyms can he fit into one sentence people know already that all of the programmers on the victory channel the the uh, cost of it is underwritten by kenneth Copa ministries so number six personal breakthroughs now that's you those of you that are watching you need answers you need direction you need clarity some of you need healing in your body and so we're believing for personal breakthroughs in people's lives and then finally number seven to prepare for all that is coming all that so he's giving a, a list of benefits to fasting is that right was he just telling us why fasting is beneficial to us hold on let me just step back 
Step back. Listen to his supposed benefits of fasting. The 2024 elections praying over those elections. Hold on. Let me just step back just a little bit more and see here. Where Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast, but when you fast, the Father that sees you in secret will reward you in the open. So here's what we're believing for. And this is what I want to encourage our Flashpoint Army in, to join us in this. I'm not talking about no food fast. I'm talking about setting certain things aside. But number one, we're believing for an awakening to God in the body of Christ. In the church we start with us so this is the benefit he's telling us the benefits of fasting right now an awakening in the body of church or i'm sorry the body of god the church or whatever okay an awakening go on number two we're believing for an awakening to god in israel and there is an awakening going on there right now okay i, I believe that these people i don't know if it's in the bible or not probably not but they believe that I mean, evangelicals like George Pearson's. Part of his doctrine is that at the end, there's going to be a moment where all uh, Jews are faced with Christianity and they're going to have a choice. And about, what is it, a third of the Jews will decide to go with Jesus and the other two-thirds will die a horrific, ugly death because God hates them if they don't, blah, 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 whatever, do what George Pearson says. So he's saying, best case scenario, there will be a great awakening in the United States, there will be a great awakening in Israel, and that's like a shout out to the end, basically, right? Okay, so those are the two benefits so far of fasting. Three, an awakening to God in America and in the nations we need to see god wait didn't he what wasn't that number one god move in a way we've never seen before and number four the 2024 elections praying over those elections those elections that will not be corrupted yeah because it worked out so well last time right you prayed for donald trump to win the 2020 election and look where it got you we're also praying for breakthroughs for this ministry, KCM, EMIC, KCBC, the Victory Channel. And, and your people know already that all of the programmers on the Victory Channel, the, the uh, cost of it is underwritten by Kenneth Copeland Ministries. So number six, personal breakthroughs. Now that's you. Those of you that are watching, you need answers, you need direction, you need clarity. Some of you need healing in your body. And so we're believing for personal breakthroughs in people's lives. And then finally, number... Okay, so the other benefits, it sounds like all of the benefits to fasting, which I'm not even clear on what that means exactly. Oh, I guess he said giving up something that you love, right? Giving up coffee or sweets or whatever, or meat or something, right? For 21 days, is that right? If you do that, then all of these things will happen. And like half of them were the exact same thing. Okay. Number seven, to prepare for all that is coming, all that the good that is coming, but we also need to be prepared for things that, that people don't normally see. What took place on October 7th of last year in Israel, that- Talking about the, uh, if you're watching this in the future, it's talking about the attack on Israel by Hamas, where they floated in on like gliders and they, captured people and it was just really really ugly just terrible terrible stuff that happened um i'm sorry that innocent people got all wrapped up in that when it was really this, the israeli government and hamas's fault it's a battle between those two and innocents are paying the price for it anyway that's what he's talking about that was a surprise attack and as we fast and as we pray, we are not going to get caught in this country with a surprise attack, no matter who's coming across the border. So good, Pastor George. <laughs> my God, dude, when I move my mouse to the corner, it like locks my screen. That's very annoying. I'll try that again. On October 7th of last year in Israel, that was a surprise attack. And as we fast and as we pray, we are not going to get caught in this country with a surprise attack, no matter who's coming across the border. So good, Pastor George. That, that's, a, that's a great list right there. Pastor Hank. Unfortunately, 
right now at this moment in history, there's this big fear mongery thing happening about the border, about the U.S. border specifically. The U.S. border is so porous and a big evil terrorists are coming in over the border and the border, the border, the border, blah, blah, blah. And um, in reality, it's it's not anywhere near what they're talking about. The border is not too porous. We have a humanitarian corridor open so that people can make their way to a U.N. refugee center. That is a legal requirement. We must have that available for people. And refugees are coming in through that corridor. Of course, yes, that's the law. They, they legally must be allowed to do that. And Republicans are fear-mongering about how we have no idea who's coming over the border and blah, blah, blah. In all seriousness, it'd be really, really valuable to America if we let in a whole bunch of immigrants and refugees. Bring them in, put them to work, add them to the economy. It would expand our economy dramatically in the United States. Why don't we? I can only think of a single reason why people on the right are so opposed to allowing immigrants in. I don't know, though. You know, you tell me. Uh, uh, tell me your thought. You heard Pastor George talk about this fast. Uh, what say you about it? Talking about the fast. OK, so should we be fasting? Well, you know, God said something to me about uh, six weeks ago, about 20. <laughs> oh my God. So he's going to claim it was his idea, right? God said something to me about this already. Yeah, Hank Kuhneman is a he's very famous, but he, I don't think he's anywhere near as famous as George Pearson's or influential, I guess. George Pearson's whether he's actually like a leader or like the owner or whatever of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, he controls billions of dollars. It's crazy how much money that dude controls. So 2024, very simple. He said, draw closer to him. Tell the people that. The second thing he said is bind the thief. And I tell you, there's no greater way than to do both of those, draw near to God, bind the thief, than to consecrate yourself in a fast before the Lord. You know, Luke 4, it increases the power. That's what happened to Jesus. He came out in the power of the Spirit. Daniel 10, Daniel prayed for 21 days. And as a result, his words, the first day that he spoke it, those angels came. But watch this. Those of you that are watching Flashpoint Army, why Pastor George is hearing from God. Daniel's fast caused something to happen in the atmosphere, in the spirit realm, in the natural. Like, I'm not even sure what they're talking about because I don't think that Daniel 10 was an apocalypse. I think Daniel 10 was... I, okay, I think the apocalypse took place in Daniel 7. And Daniel 10 was like a, uh, not a continuation exactly, but it was like, it was between apocalypses. As a matter of fact, I don't even think that there was an apocalypse again after chapter 7's apocalypse. I don't know. It's been a while since I read chapter 12 or 10, but anyway, okay. Natural that concerned nations. I'm telling you, we're going to see breakthrough. Isaiah 58, Pastor George talked about rewards. The Bible talks about when you fast, you break the bands of wickedness. You set the oppressed and let them go free. You destroy yokes. You undo heavy burdens. But here's a reward. Light will spring forth. That's breakthrough. The Bible says when you call upon God. and Dude, I don't even know what he's talking about. What is he going on about right now? Isaiah 58, after you fast, he'll answer you. You get answered prayer. Says God will guide you and watch this. Lastly, God will heal you in your body. But how about this? He will heal our great country, the United States. So okay, what does this have to do with fasting? This dude is talking about giving up something you love, like Lent or whatever, right? He was talking about how people should be, you know, giving up coffee or something. What does this have to do with any of that? It, hey, is Hank just like saying random words and hoping that like they connect with somebody in the audience? Like what? 
I am a part of this. Pastor George, you're hearing from God. Watch what the Lord does to bring victory after victory to this great country and to the people for what they've been through. Yeah, amen. All right, Andrew, I'll get you to weigh in here on having No amen. Don't amen to that. That was completely meaningless. What the hell are you going on about? Doing this fast. Well, you know, I really appreciate what Pastor George said. The things that he was emphasizing is how it changes our heart, makes us more sensitive, how we hear from God and stuff. And so many people think that fasting is somehow or another like a lever that gives you extra pull on God. And if you approach it with that attitude that this... Like what? So he's saying people view fasting as a lever that gives you more pull on God? So if you fast, then God loves you more, is what he's saying? Or that's how people view it? Okay. This is something you're going to do to make God move. I think you totally undo the effects of a fast. You know, there's a verse. So if you assume God's going to do something for you, if you fast, then he's not going to do anything for you. Okay. Right here in Matthew chapter 17, where Jesus said... I mean, have you guys noticed at all? I don't know how affiliated with the Bible you are or if you've ever read it or what denominations you guys come from individually or what. I have no idea. But have you noticed that none of, the, none of this stuff, nothing that they've said so far has been Bible-based? I can't think of a single like verse that talks about God not helping you if you're fasting because you're trying to get something out of him and stuff like what what are these people going on about right now that how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting and people often take that that that's talking about certain demons only leave through prayer and fasting but the subject of the previous verse was the subject of unbelief. Why couldn't we cast the devil out? He said it's because of unbelief. And I believe fasting cast unbelief out of us. But you catch what he just said? I believe. I believe. Now, anything that he says after that means he has no basis to believe this. It means I think so, but I don't have the Bible verses to back it up, so I'm just going to say it anyway. And people think that I'm special. And that I have, like, the ear of God already. So, you know, they're going to believe anything that I say I believe. Okay? Tell me what you believe there, Andrew Womack. The subject of the previous verse was the subject of unbelief. Why couldn't we cast the devil out? He said it's because of unbelief. And I believe fasting cast unbelief out of us because it's... it's and so he thinks that fasting casts unbelief out. And what did I tell you? Absolutely no Bible verse to support what that claim that he just made. So is he saying that if people just like lock their children in a room for like three days or four days and just give them water and nothing else, then those children, when they come out, they'll be Christian, right? Because fasting kills unbelief, basically, right? Am I interpreting this correctly? It's taking away everything that's distracting us and just putting our focus completely on God. And that's really the power of a fast. It, it makes us laser focused on God because we are denying our flesh. Amen. All right. Amen, he says. No, because we're denying our flesh. Like, come on, man. Look, sometimes I get the need to, quote unquote, deny your flesh, right? Sometimes you got to... Be careful about the things you do and you got to be conscious of where you are and and all that other junk. But Christians take this to well, I'm sorry, not Christians, but these Christians, these right wing nutcases take it to an entirely new level. It's like. Everything these people say is insane and they want to bring everything, every doctrine that they believe in, everything that they do they want it to be like the most extreme version of it. Like you can't just be selective about who you sleep with. You have to never have premarital sex with anybody. In fact, just be celibate. Why would you sleep with anybody at all? Just be celibate, completely celibate.
They always take things to an extreme degree, and I don't know why. And I just realized just now I forgot to buy a canteen. I'm supposed to buy a canteen here. Yep. God, I'm afraid I'm going to die. I, I might actually die. This is my last... You know what? Maybe I should go around taking out some bots and see if I can get some life from them. All right, so you can find out more about this, Pastor George, at emic.org slash fast. What are they going to get when they go there? Oh, Gene, there's all kinds of things on there. There's a, a sheet that they can have that they can fill out on the back, the things that they're believing God for. Uh, there are messages that I've taught. There's four, there's four messages that Brother Copeland has taught on fasting and prayer. Uh, oh, my God, dude. Wait a minute. Where EMIC.org slash fast. Okay. Hold on. Ooh, slash fast. Oh, my God. I got it. I bought the domain name for my company and I had it redirected to my main website and I was wondering if it, the redirect worked or not. So I was just checking it. Blackcatpublishing.org. Yep, it worked. Nice. So out of curiosity. Okay, let's see here. Um, download Pastor George's fasting handout here. Okay, I shall. I shall download his fasting handbook. Fasting and prayer handout all right um wait a minute like, like i'm just gonna if i can blow this up a little bit here uh you know what yeah i'll just that works blow it up all the way all right let's see what we got here uh, the lord has called kenneth copeland ministries it's two pages Eagle Mountain International Church, Victory Channel, and Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Kenneth Copeland Bible College. God, that's sad. To a 21-day Daniel fast. Our foundation scripture is Daniel 10, 2-3. Quote, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. New King James Version. Now I'm curious about what was happening in Daniel 10. Let me just look that up real quick. Hold on. Um, Daniel 10. I always use the NRSV. Best translation out there, in my opinion. It's the chosen translation of scholars. Let's see what was happening. Um, in the third year of King Cyrus of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel. Oh, the book of Daniel, it was claimed in the book that it was written in the year 550 or somewhere in there, between 600 and 515 BCE, but it was really written in 164 BCE uh, under the reign of Antiochus the Seleucid Empire, but it's writing about 550. So around that time, 538, I believe, King Cyrus of Persia. So th the Babylonians had captured Jerusalem because they refused to pay tribute. And that was in 597. And then they destroyed Solomon's temple in 586 BCE, right? And they took somewhere in the vicinity of 20% of the Jews in Jerusalem as slaves, including all the leadership. That was called the exilic period. Uh, so after the Babylonians took the Jews as slaves, Persian King Cyrus sweeps in. He is no, not Jewish. He's not like his religion is completely unconnected to any of this, unrelated. But he decreed that Jews were now free to go back to their home province of Yehud, is what it was called at the time, Judah. Uh, that was 538, I believe, or 536. I don't remember. And he also ordered the temple be rebuilt. It was finally rebuilt in about 516 to 515 BCE. So that's what this is referring to. So it says, in the third year of King Cyrus of Persia... So three years after the Jews were freed, basically. 
A word was revealed to Daniel who named Bel- who was named Belteshazzar. The word was true, and it concerned a great conflict. He understood the word, having received understanding the vision. I'm sorry, received understanding in the vision. At that time, he'd been mourning for three weeks. He hadn't eaten any rich food, so on and so forth. So what's in Daniel 9? What happens right before this? I believe we're getting close to um, the beasts of the sea. Um, let's see. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, by birth, a Mede. A Mede and, uh, um, the Medes and the Persians were connected. Uh, Turn to the Lord God, seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Uh, Let's see here. The 70 weeks. I mean, all this stuff, every number that you're reading in here, 70 weeks. uh, There's a spot in here that says 2,300 mornings and evenings. All of the numbers in this chapter, the next chapter, and chapter 8, 7 and 8, are all used by Jehovah's Witnesses as the basis for their Bible math that arrives at them at, like, 1914. It's crazy. Um, Let's see. Yeah, right here, right here. So, uh, chapter 8. He answered him, For 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful state. (laughs) They used this verse as the basis for some ridiculous Bible math. Oh, my God. Yeah, so this is a vision. This is an apocalypse, and the apocalypse is of the beasts of the sea in chapter 7. They come out of the sea. Uh, The beasts have, like, teeth of iron, and they crush, and one of them has a horn, and the horn has human eyes and a mouth speaking arrogantly. That horn with eyes represented King Antiochus of the Seleucid Empire. Uh, Chapter 8 is the angel explaining what he saw to him. Gabriel interprets the vision right here. See, when I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I tried to understand it. Then someone appeared standing before me, having the appearance of a man. And I heard a human voice by the Uli calling, Gabriel, help this man understand the vision, blah, blah, blah. So, as is standard in apocalyptic genre writing, angel appears and explains everything. And what did the angel explain? He basically explained that there were empires that would come and go, and this empire would also fall, thus vindicating and freeing the Jews. So Babylonian Empire fell, Persian Empire fell, Greek Empire fell, the Seleucid Empire will also fall. That was the message. Um... And now they're just talking about what happens when they get to go back to whatever. I mean, this stuff already happened when this was written down. The 70 weeks stuff, and then they rebuild the temple, and it's preserved for all this time. The temple had already been rebuilt long ago, like long before this was written. So that's what it seems like. So Daniel was mourning, I guess, because what? The temple was destroyed, and it was destroyed because of people's wrongdoing, and it was punishment by God. That's what I'm assuming this verse is about, but I'm not super sure. In Daniel chapters 11 and 12, it goes on to talk about the kings of the north and the south and how they're fighting each other, and one of them is going to destroy the other. And neither of them are going to be God's people, and so on and so forth. King of the North. Let me see if I can find King of the North. Yeah, here you go. Chapter 11. It talks all about King of the North and the South. Jehovah's Witnesses use that, the King of the North and the South, as the basis for more prophecy, yet more prophecy. They named the King of the North as somebody special, somebody unique to Jehovah's Witness belief. They believe that the King of the North is Russia and the King of the South is America. I mean, it's just ridiculous nonsense. The king of the north was the Seleucid Empire because it was north of Jerusalem. And the king of the south was the Ptolemy Empire of Egypt because the Ptolemy Empire and the Seleucid Empire were fighting each other. 
They are literally to the north and to the south of each other, like of Jerusalem. These people are so ridiculous. Anyway, let me see. So I, I guess that's the foundation for this ridiculous Bible verse, Daniel 10, 2 to 3. By the way, I talk about all of this stuff in my book, and I break down like all, how this works and how we know what we know, and I explain why or how we came to the conclusion that the book of Daniel is written in the year 164 BCE, not 550 BCE. I talk about Jehovah's Witnesses' interpretation of pretty much every chapter in Daniel. Okay, let's see. So they're basically saying they want to start this fast. Nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Pleasant bread represents those things we set aside that the flesh craves in order to feed our spirit. Why 21 days? We all need this extended time of spiritual focus in order to receive answers, direction, clarity, breakthroughs, and deliverance from stubborn strongholds. So that was George Pearson saying why he's doing this fast for 21 days. Okay, well, you didn't tell us why it was 21 days instead of 23 or like 14 or 15. Why 21? This is like a super odd number. It's important. This is a quote apparently from Kenneth Copeland. It's important for you to understand that it is not the fasting itself that brings the deliverance. Jesus has already obtained deliverance through the complete work of redemption. The Holy Spirit who lives inside of you knows how to pray in order to bring the deliverance Jesus has already provided. Like, okay, I don't, what's he even saying here? This doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like on the struggle bus trying to understand what this means. Fasting simply brings the spirit man, which is in union with the Holy Spirit, into ascendance over the flesh. What does it mean to bring the spirit man into ascendance over the flesh? What the hell are they going on about? It also limits the influence of the physical appetites so that you can more effectively hear from and respond to the spirit. This enhances intercession and effective Holy Spirited intercession sets the captives free i don't he said he's going to tell me why he's doing a 21 day fast i am still just as lost now as i was earlier oh i guess it's yeah okay i guess it's because of uh daniel it says he was mourning for three full weeks well i mean daniel could just as easily have been mourning for like four weeks or, or 10 weeks would they have then believed that it was something special? I mean, the number three and the number ten in, apoco uh, in apocalyptic literature are almost never literal, for the record, but okay. The rewards, or desired results, of this fast. Oh, he already said what these were. An awakening to God in the body of Christ, an awakening to God in Israel... Uh, an awakening in America and the nations, the 2024 elections, breakthroughs for KCM and the Bible College and the Victory Channel, personal breakthroughs, answers, direction, clarity, and preparation for all that is coming. I don't even know what any of that stuff is supposed to mean. My fasting checklist. One, decide the purpose of your fast. Well, didn't he tell us what the purpose is? To get these rewards, of course. And two, identify what you are going to fast. Are you going to give up coffee? Are you going to give up chewing gum? And number three, proclaim the fast before the Lord. So pray and tell God that you're giving up coffee. I wonder if Trump's going to partake in the fast, right? These people on screen. Uh, wait, they're not on screen yet. Hang on. Let me pull it up. Wait, where are they? I know they're here somewhere. Okay, this guy on screen here, he knows Donald Trump personally. He has prayed with Donald Trump. He has spoken with Donald Trump. He's been, in, oh my God, I, I just killed myself by laying a, I'm an idiot. Anyway, 
He's been in the same room. He's prayed with him. You know, I've never seen the game over screen before on this game. Interesting. Oh, you guys don't see what I'm doing. Okay. There you go. Sorry about that. Oh, my God. I just hit new game. I didn't mean to do that. Hold on. It's a real physical PlayStation 2 that I'm playing this game on, so... Maybe this will bring back some memories for you guys. Remember that noise? That's a Capcom thing. Now loading. You remember this? Sitting here waiting for something to load for 20 minutes? <laughs> Old school. Wow. World covered by endless water. Okay, back to what we were saying. <clears throat> I wonder if, uh, I mean, these people have been in a room with Trump. They know Trump. They talk to Trump. Is Trump going to take part in this supposed fast? What would he give up, you think? What would these people expect Donald Trump to give up? I am, just tell me what you think about it in the comments. What would these people want Donald Trump to give up? My guess would be social media for 21 days. I believe that they would want him to give up social media. That's a pretty good guess, right? Wait, is it? Information that they need, the scriptures, it's loaded with the information. And we began the fast today. Today was the day we started. So for 21 days, we are setting our faces before God, all of us. And we are going to see breakthroughs. We're going to see things take place in our nation, in our lives, in Israel, in the elections. And we, and, and I really hadn't announced this to the church yet, but I'm thinking about another one as we get into this year, because the closer we come to those elections, we need to be hearing from God. We need to hear from on high to know what to say, to know what to pray, and to know what to do. Amen. Th so, he, what was it he, he didn't say to the church? He needs to pray to know what to do? I, to know what to say, to know what to pray, and to know what to do. Uh, right. So, he is identifying himself as a prophet. Like, whether he wants to accept the fact that he's a prophet or not, he's effectively calling himself a prophet right now. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Pastor George, for dropping by for the Flashpoint Army. If you want more information, go to emic.org slash fast. You can get more information, understand what it is. I know we kind of kind of skimmed over the top of a lot of the details if you're not familiar with it, but there you can download absolutely free. All the materials are free and find out more about it. Uh, any final words, Pastor? Yeah, so I downloaded it. We looked at it just now. It was just nothing but complete and total unadulterated cringe. Mr. George, before we let you go. I just want you to know that this is, is going to change lives. And Amen. if you enter into this, you can jump in now, even though it started today. Mm, yes, the fast is going to change lives. This 21 day fast, it started today. Wow, so he's gotta get this whole fasting campaign out like immediately then, huh? What, a, what about people that start tomorrow? Are they gonna? have to go like the full 21 days or do they just do it for like 19 days or 20 or what you can jump in now with us on this and you'll be able to see things in your lives that you've never seen before if you've never done this before just pick out something that you have have yeah, like you enjoy uh but i don't know if you guys knew this but if you th like kick that can behind the bakery thing you get a thousand zenny and you turn darker and darker and darker until you're like black, basically. It's a sign that you're a bad guy. Basically, if you uh, if you kick vending machines and destroy them enough, you turn black also. Phoenix Winter, I had a PS2, and aside from having Kingdom Hearts 2, I had a game called Dog Island. I want a PlayStation 2 again for that reason. Yeah, a family member actually gave me this PS2 Slim. I think it was their old PS2 Slim. And, like, I already had a fat one, so I sold the fat one on eBay and got something else. I think I got a, a 3DS, a new 3DS XL after that. But this PS2 Slim had Kingdom Hearts in it, the game, just the disc. That's pretty cool. I've never played, but I've heard it's a good game.
Um, I've been talking to my church about what they're doing concerning social media. Think about it. Fasting social media. Wow. Oh, yes. It would absolutely be the thing that they would tell Trump he needs to stop using. Social media. No doubt about it. What a challenge. And, and of course, Trump's not going to do it. And is that going to be like any indication to these people that like maybe Trump doesn't care about them, doesn't even like them, thinks that they're all either scam artists or suckers that are being scammed? They aren't going to think that far ahead. They're not going to care. They're not going to accept that, even though it's pretty obvious. But what a reward that God gives us in this fast. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming by. Thank Amen, he says. Thanks, Gene. Uh, uh, MIC.org slash fast for all of the information. These people are shameless. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, listen, I want to say something here that I did not get to earlier. If for some reason you're not getting our program, uh, you need to make sure you follow us on Rumble. Oh, come on, dude. He is the perpetual victim. If for some reason you're not getting our program on the TV show that we run it on, you know, the actual TV network, the Victory Channel, like E! or Oxygen or whatever. If for some reason you can't see it, like it blacks out or something, the deep state is trying to get one over on you. They're trying to prevent us from getting our message out. That's why you can't get it. So make sure you check our Rumble, because Rumble doesn't do that to us. These people are so ridiculous. It is a perpetual victim complex that they display nonstop. Anyway, I guess that's the end of the segment with George Pearson. This is absolutely ridiculous, man. But I love it. I'm so entertained by this. If you want to watch more of this, I'm probably going to be finishing this in the morning. Owen Morgan Unfiltered on YouTube. Just Owen Unfiltered YouTube channel. So check that out. I swear I'm going to get this can in one of these days. Really bad at getting things into holes. I'll figure it out. Anyway, yeah, come on over to um, Owen Unfiltered and uh, listen to the rest of it. That would be fantastic. Oh, and check out my book, okay? Um, the pre-order time is four to eight weeks. If you don't want to pre-order, I understand, but this is not a donation. This is a financial transaction that I will fulfill, and there is redress. There is a method of redress if you're unhappy with it. That's why I want to do it through Etsy, so... Anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me. It's been fun. I appreciate it. Check out the books, and I will talk to you guys uh, hopefully tomorrow. If not, I'll talk to you next week, okay?